Just because you did the big chop doesn't mean that your hair is going to be flourishing the noche a la mañana, which means from night to day. Like, no, it takes time in order to get your hair to a healthy state permanently. <laughs> guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is erica if you're new here make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below so that way you don't miss out on any videos that i upload from here on out and if you are an old subscriber but you're back for more welcome back my love i missed you so much um we are gonna get down with the get down today uh i'm still coming up off of my cold so my voice is very much like raspy and it feels very um dry so excuse that but um i'm still gonna go in and give you guys some tips some things that you must know if you've big chopped already or if you're thinking about big chopping wherever you're at as far as with the big chop if you're doing research you're trying to figure out what to do you need to watch this video and you need to watch it thoroughly because these are things that I learned. I've done the Big Chop three times and here recently I did my very last Big Chop which was the third time in February 20th. So I know what I'm talking about. I like to keep my videos very short, very simple and to the point for you guys. So I broke it down into five things so that you guys can get your tips and be on your way. So the very first thing is the Big Chop will be a very freeing, kind of feels like a very liberating experience. It will feel like you are just letting so much go, like just the heavy weight on your shoulders is gone. You will feel that with the big chop. However, it will hit you in a few hours, in a few days, maybe even a few minutes, maybe in a few weeks, but it will hit you. Whether or not it hits you in a good way or a bad way, that just depends on you. That just depends on a lot of different factors, whether you feel confident or not, whether you feel like it was a good decision or not. But the big chop will hit you. So it didn't hit me at first, any of the times that I did it. I was just like chop, 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 because like the, drill, the adrenaline is rushing in you. But it will hit you, you guys, sooner or later, either good in a good way or a bad way. The big chop will affect you in some kind of way. Number two is the Big Chop will not solve your hair problems. The Big Chop is not gonna solve your problems at all. The only thing the Big Chop will do, I will say, is get rid of damaged goods, split ends. It will get rid of all of that hair that really just needs to go away. It will get rid of anything that really is just weighing down on that beautiful and flourishing hair that it will do and it also will allow you to step into um i guess a space where now you can start over now you can relearn things but doing the big chop in itself is not going to solve your problems now after you've done the big chop you actually have to go out and do things do your research figure out what your hair likes what your hair doesn't like what's the best routine for your hair what's the best products for your hair so doing the big chop in itself, it is a first step. It is not the only and everlasting step. There are, it is basically an entrance to a new journey. So just make sure that you guys know that doing the big chop is not gonna mean that the next day your hair is gonna be flourishing, that your hair, your curls are gonna be popping. Like sometimes it takes time for your curls to even be popping because your curls don't know what they're doing. So just because you did the big chop, I mean, this is this varies from person to person, but just because you did the big chop doesn't mean that your hair is going to be flourishing the noche a la mañana, which means from night to day. Like, no, it takes time in order to get your hair to a healthy state permanently. Number three is protective styles are okay, but they can affect you negatively you guys and the reason i'm gonna say this is because a lot of people cut their hair off and they quickly like this get into protective style mode but let me tell you about protective styles yes protective styles can be very good on natural hair growth but one thing they will do is not allow you to be able to learn your hair and by this I mean because your hair is protected or put away in a wig or put away like for example in the locks that I had that whole two months I didn't have time to learn my hair I didn't have time to do anything with my hair to see what products it liked anything so that kind of set me back because it's like 
yeah, I got growth from it, which is always good. Growth is always good. But guys, do you really want to just do protective style so you can see growth? Or do you want to see growth and also learn your hair in the long run? Because my thing is, I've been to the point where I did protective styles just for growth. But then when I got to a very nice growth, I still didn't want to wear my hair out because I didn't know how to style it. I didn't know what products worked for it. I didn't know what my hair liked. I didn't know what routine to go about using. I didn't know anything. So yeah, my hair grew because my hair was in protective styles. But at the end of the day, it made me lazy and it made me not want to like get into my hair and it made me even when I got the length to not even want to style my hair because I didn't know what would make my curls pop I didn't know what would keep my hair moisturized and one thing I can say about protective styles is they do work you guys if you do them right they work but are you really just wanting to keep your hair put away to a to attain the length so you say and then when you get to that length you know nothing about your hair so is it really a natural hair journey if you're not dibbling and dabbling in your hair and learning what products it likes and learning what routine it likes and learning how it reacts to things? Really, it's not really a journey. You're just kind of putting your hair away, moisturizing it and calling it a day. Like that's, I don't really think that is a natural hair journey. That's just you protective styling or putting your hair away so that you can see growth which like I said is okay if that's what you do, but just remember that it's not what's going to teach you about your hair. What's going to teach you about your hair is being in your hair, letting your hair be out, doing hairstyles, seeing how it reacts to different things. Number four is you will go through a phase where you feel ugly, where you feel very low in your self-esteem. Sometimes you will not feel confident. Sometimes you will wake up in the morning and be like, my hair, I look like a boy, I look, like i just look ugly and it's just it's just honestly it's just our mentality how we were raised to think well not raised but how we grew up thinking that long hair was the only thing that made someone beautiful long hair is the only thing that makes someone attractive or pretty and that's just so engraved in our minds that we wake up in the morning and we see our hair and we're just like I'm ugly, I need to slap on a wig because that's what's gonna make me look pretty. That's what's gonna make me look acceptable. That's what's gonna make me walk into a room and I won't feel like the oddball. But in reality, you need to learn to love your hair and to love what God gave you and to love it at even its shortest stage because when you learn, when you love your hair at its shortest stage, then you will realize like, wait a minute, like, hold up. I'm beautiful regardless if I got short hair, long hair, all of that. And then when your hair gets longer, you will appreciate it more. And if you take my advice and you don't cover up your hair and you don't always try to hide behind protective styling and this and that, and you learn your hair and learn what products work for your hair, trust me, you are going to fall in love with yourself at all stages. That insecurity that you had is going to begin to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And you're gonna see how beautiful you really are and how things can always be perfected and you can always learn things about yourself. It just takes time. You cannot hide under them. You cannot hide under your emotions. You know, you can, just like you can't hide um under wigs and weeds you have to let your crown out and you have to learn about your crown and what your crown likes so that kind of went into the protective style tip but definitely you guys you will go through a phase where you do feel crappy and you feel like oh my god i'm so ugly and one thing i would do is i would get cute i would play around a little bit more in some makeup i would get my nails done a little bit longer so it brings out that femininity so these are just little things that you can do whenever you do feel ugly. Also, you can um, style your hair. Like if you're not doing anything for the day and you're just like, let me just style my hair. Let me see, let me try this new combo. Let me try this new leave-in conditioner with this new gel or something. Let me, let me deep condition, I ain't doing nothing today. Let me do something good for my hair. Um, just do things even when you're not busy like do things that are for your hair like even if it's styling even if it's making it look cute for the day even if you're not doing anything things like that are really going to help to boost up your confidence and to help your relationship with your hair thrive the reason I say your relationship with your hair is because I feel like 
we have relationships with everything just like we have relationships with relationships with people you can have relationships with everything and i feel like a very healthy relationship with your hair looks like where you don't want to wear anything where you feel so unnatural whenever you're covering it up or whenever you're trying to cover it up like that's a strong relationship with your hair that's a strong bond with your hair and we want to create very strong bonds with who we are ultimately so the fifth tip is wash and goals are going to be your way to learn your hair period um it's okay you can do twist outs and braid outs and things like that but one thing about wash and goals is wash and goals force you to see what works for your hair with a wash and go a lot of people don't like wash and goals and i used to be one of them because we are lazy we try one thing and we're just like oh this ain't for me whatever like wash and goals i feel like are beautiful because everybody's wash and go will look different and will dry differently everybody's wash and go will look different because a wash and go is enhancing your curl pattern that you naturally have so when you're doing your hair in a wash and go and no, don't nobody else got that same curl pattern that you have nobody else has the same density that you have as well as curl pattern as well as just all the attributes about your hair nobody has the exact same ones nobody has your exact same face your exact same feature so when you style that hair and you put yourself together you're just like damn this is how i look this is the natural me like me right now this is my curl pattern i mean it could be a little bit better than this but i was in a rush but this is me this is how i look and nobody can look the same as me and i feel like with wash and goes it forces you to to like really embrace that curl pattern that you actually do have and it also forces you to figure out like okay well if my curls ain't popping it must be because i'm not deep conditioning enough or maybe my deep conditioner is not penetrating or maybe the leave-in that i'm using does not work well with my hair listen guys wash and goes are for everybody you just have to learn what products really work for your hair and you have to come up with a routine where your wash and goes can last at least two days with my hair being this short my wash and go can literally only last me two days after that i have to kind of co-wash and restyle it but if your hair is longer than mine wash and goes can be for you um i really don't know what else to say about that except that wash and goes can help you to get to the point where you know what works for your hair and i'm telling you with summer coming up it's really good to do wash and goes because you're providing water to your hair on a daily basis and not only that but as long as you're doing things right and you're using the right tools you're not yanking out or ripping out your hair wash and goals will help you because they are low manipulation so you style your hair and you leave it alone that's it don't put your hands on it there's no need for none of it you style your hair you get your curls the way you want them to look and you let it dry and once it dries 100 percent, then you will be 100 percent certain that the next day all you need to do is just throw in a little bit more water refreshing your curls maybe pick it out put some olive oil put some sort of oil for some more moisture and you'll be good so i really do feel like wash and goes are for everybody and i love seeing naturals rock wash and goes i it's something about it that makes me feel some kind of way um i'm not gonna tell anybody how to go on about their journey these are just this is just my advice i'm not forcing anything on anyone but i really feel like a natural hair journey is something that you're um that you're actually in your hair you're learning your hair you're wearing your hair out and um i really feel like wash and goes is a good way to wear your hair out to embrace your natural curl pattern and to get it popping sis because we all got curls we just got different types of curls and our curls like different types of products so don't look at felicia and think that your hair is going to react how felicia's hair reacted with a certain product it's not going to do it's not, it doesn't work that way you have to learn your hair and that's why from here on out anything that i any information i give you guys about products i'm gonna give you guys suggestions but you guys go out and you guys try products you guys try shampoos and conditioners and things like that because your hair is your hair and your hair is not going to react to anything the way felicia's did okay so let's stop also trying to hop on other people's regimens and remember to learn your hair and see what works for your hair
just to let you guys know, I'm actually coming out with a video on things that you need when you big chop or when you go natural. And that video is coming out tomorrow. So make sure that you stay tuned because I'm going to be telling you guys exactly what you're going to need after you big chop your hair. Overall, you guys, the big chop is an amazing experience. If you're thinking about doing it and it's just something that's daunting on you, like as it was for me, just cut your hair, get rid of them ends, girl. I got you. If you need advice, just go ahead and comment down below or you can DM me on Instagram personally. I don't mind at all. I've done it three times and the last two times that I've done it, I always said like, I'm only gonna transition. I'm not doing this big chop no more. And I ended up doing it again because it is freedom. It is literally freedom because you are getting rid of that perspective that you have to have long hair. Again, I'm going to be coming out with a video telling you guys what tools and products and things you will need when you big chop. So make sure that you guys stay tuned for that tomorrow. I love you guys. I'll see you guys all in the very next video. Bye, loves.